What if everything you have deemed as impossible really was possible? What have you known and believed was possible your whole life? You just didn't know how to actualize it. Come and discover a world of infinite possibilities on Outside the Impossible with Venus Castleberg. On this show, we will share pragmatic tools to create the life and living you truly desire. And now, your host, Venus Castleberg. <clears throat> Hello, welcome back, everyone. Super excited to have you guys here. Um, <clears throat> and I am like ecstatic to introduce, I have my very first guest, Sarah Andros. Um, and <clears throat> Sarah and I met a couple of years ago at um, an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitators training, and um, there was just something really uh, kind and uh, gentle, and I was just really, I, it, I felt very blessed to be in the presence of this woman. So I'm excited to be able to um, introduce her to you and to talk today about the magic of bodies. How how did we get so lucky? <laughs> so that something, <laughs> that's awesome. So um, Sarah was born in the UK. She grew up in Perth, Western Australia. From a young child, she had a carefree nature and a deep desire to know more about life. This eventually led to her study of psychology in hopes of understanding the meaning of life more. Delusioned after university, however, she chose to travel the world solo, which just <clears throat> which satisfied her curiosity more for, than her degree. After 18 months, she returned home, primarily from physical sickness, which led her to a deeper dive of self-discovery. This led her to the study of a variety of natural health modalities, to discover the amazing healing capacities of the body, and later to find the incredible world of access consciousness. Um, I'm just, again, so thrilled to have Sarah here with us. Welcome, Sarah, to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Such a pleasure to be here. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And I was uh, reading your bio and you sent it to me and I thought, wow, there are there is a lot of things I don't actually know about Sarah. So I thought, well, let's find out a little bit more. <laughs> so I'd love to hear about your travels. Like after studying psychology, you were like, oh, I'm out. That's not really what I wanted. <laughs> and so you went to travel around the world. Where'd you go? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Psychology was rats and stats for me. And I thought, no, people have have blood and a heart and they're really real. So I thought I'm going to go out and find some more of them. So I traveled from Perth through Singapore to Egypt. Then I went to Amsterdam. I spent a lot of time in the UK, um, reconnecting with family, reconnecting my family. Um, I lived in Italy. I went through Europe. Um, I went to the Caribbean. I may have missed a couple of places, but I had an amazing adventure. It was an 18 months of, of self-discovery and really exploring what was beyond the reality that I'd been exposed to as a kid. And for me, that was where it really <laughs> it overtook what I was able to receive from a degree. It, it opened my eyes to very different ways of thinking. Um, a lot of Europe at the time was much more, shall I say, advanced or more forward thinking in the, in the area of natural health and of talking about even energy in relation to the body. So it piqued my interest. Um, even more so for that reason. Awesome. What would you say that your biggest takeaway was from that trip, that adventure? <laughs> I, I met a lot of really, really interesting people. The thing that, and I still, it won't leave me, it's just so prevalent. I met a couple of gentlemen in Amsterdam and I remember that they were talking about energy and they were talking about the body and you know, things like auras and stuff like that. And there were things that I, as soon as we started talking, it was like, wow, this is someone finally who is speaking to a language that I know to be real and true. And until that point, I hadn't had a conversation like that. And it literally gives me goosebumps now because it was an opening of a doorway of a possibility that I knew since a kid was available and yet I, I had never really come across anyone 
who firstly believed me <laughs> and secondly <laughs> who knew more than I did and, and was happy to converse about it. So it was like, wow, <laughs> I was gobsmacked. I was 20 going, this is what I've been asking for. Wow, and part, very possibly why you got into studying psychology in the first place, right? Was... Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had done my three-year degree prior to travel, and I guess some of the the information that they'd given you out with the university was we were going to study cultural psychology, we were going to look at dreams, we were going to look at a lot of the kind of esoterical stuff, and in the end it wasn't that. So mm. I had to create my own degree. I just did it in a year and a half rather than three years. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. uh, and so on that trip, what would you say you learned about yourself? One of the biggest things, and it's since been validated time and time again, is I realised that I function very much from what I know, not what I think. Mm. So I would choose to follow that or what we call awareness or knowing and I'd be in the, apparently, you know, in inverted commas, in the right place at the right time. And, you know, I had, I'd been taught by, you know, a father who was very, you know, you've got to look at the pros and cons. You've got to think it out, like have a think about it. And I've been, you know, this was my exploration outside of my family, outside of university to really trust me. And so through following my knowing, through following what I call the energy and really trusting me, I created some amazing possibilities that if I had have been talking to someone as a, an advisory role like I used to with my dad when I was a kid, I would never have experienced them. So the trust in me was incredible. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so I know this might seem like an interesting question, but I know a lot of people are like, well, well how do I do that? Like, how 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 would how would you tell somebody to start trusting themselves like like what did that how did that look yeah. for you and then it's, also yeah totally that's a fantastic question and i get asked that a lot with clients um and in classes and i say to them well what i'd like you to do is sort of go back to a, to a, to a point in your life where you knew you had to do something it didn't make any sense and you chose to do it did it work out and they're like, they always like, yeah, of course it did. It was great. It was da, da, da. And I'm like, that energy, get a sense of that energy and get a sense of that energy in your body and how that felt and how you almost had a sense usually of no mind. It wasn't a mental cognitive working it out. It was just you knew. And some people, people might perceive that as a, as a sensation in their body or a feeling or a sense of space or a lightness. Everyone is different. And so, again, when I work with people, I have them find the way that works for them. So if there are listeners on the call, you know, right now, like, do have a, have a think about, or not a thing, but look at a time when you do choose to do something because you just knew you had to do it. It didn't, it may not have even made any sense to you. And get a sense of how that feels now in your body and the recall of that. And that there is the energy that you're looking for. It's, it's not so much something I can explain how to do in a cognitive way. It's more essential thing where you sense that, that, that feeling in the body and you're like, okay, that. And generally it feels, for want of a better word, really yummy. It feels delicious. It's, it's like you have a really strong sense of, of, of you and it, it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people say. There's this knowing that is paramount to that. And if you're willing to choose from that space, that's when you're actually acknowledging the energy of your true life and also including your body in your life. Mm. Does that help answer oh. your question? Yeah, that, that was beautiful. Great. Um, I do know for me, and I'll because I think there's probably others out there too, like there are times when I have a deep knowing that there is something that I need to do or a place I need to go or like that, that, and there's still this, it's like, I don't know if it's a resistance to that <laughs> or uh, not <laughs> trusting in that or, um, so I'm just, I'm curious, like, what do you do for, in those places where the, like, let's just use a move for example like you get the knowing that you need to move somewhere 
and yet there's something in you that just um, it kind of sends you into a beyond because it wasn't in your plans or it wasn't in your <laughs> yeah I love that it wasn't in my plans hang on right. it was going to be like this this and this whoa this is not in my plan <laughs> right. well, first of all I mean essentially when that occurs it's the mind it's the mind that's kind of mm. you're we're allowing the mind to get in the way I always say to people what was your first what was your first hit on it like your, in, your, your knowing is instantaneous it's right. the mind that make you kin so if you start having to think about something, that's when you've gone to the mind. And I guess what I do, and I, I can't demonstrate because you can't see me, but I sort of say to people, okay, so imagine, so with my left hand out front, I'm like, okay, this is what you knew just then, okay? And then with my right hand, I extend my hand out to the right, and I'm like, let's make the gap between when you have a knowing and then when your mind kicks in, let's create a bigger gap so that your mind takes longer to kick in. So it's like mm. there's that knowing, expand, 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 and allow the mind to kick in later, but so late that you already have your knowing really fully in place. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then what it does is it extends the time period that only your knowing is available to you. And then we're just basically saying, mind, yeah, we're acknowledging it, but we're saying we don't need you quite yet. And so it <laughs> adds that. <laughs> well, you can just sit on the bench <laughs> you're, you're like the standby then the the knowing is it, you start to build that muscle of knowing and the thing too is you know we do sometimes doubt our choices but the doubt is something that distracts us from our awareness and when we go okay so if if we ask a question that's probably another really good way of of you know challenging the mind because the mind just wants to know that it's right. So you can just sort of ask, well, what am I aware of? I wonder, I wonder, be curious. I wonder, what would this create? And, and get a sense of, again, this is the thing with the body, we're including the body. The body knows, the mind doesn't, the body knows. And when we include our body in our life, we can actually use the body as a barometer to give us feedback. Um, and probably the piece to add to this is that energy never lies. So when you are able to perceive an energy of a situation or an energy of a potential choice and you're, allowed, you're able to perceive that in your body, then number one, the energy is not lying. And number two, you can have a, a get a sense of what that's going to be like for not just you, you know, you know, bot, your being or your soul, but also for your body. That's brilliant. Yep, and it, it isn't it isn't the mind a tricky little thing? <laughs> so oh, it's a tricky I, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're I love how you said. It. Yep. <laughs> and I've never thought about putting it on a bench and just being like, you can <laughs> you can chime in later. I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you're better. Just hang out there for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great cool right. um so thank you for that yeah um would you be willing i know in you also said that you kind of went home for for physical sickness would you um be willing to touch on what that was and kind of your Absolutely. journey to wellness yeah oh my gosh yeah um i've always been a bit of a go-getter like a go 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 kind of girl so one of the things that sometimes comes with that is um probably i don't even know if this word is doing too much but sometimes we don't listen to the body when the body's going oh i've really got to rest or i really require this or maybe we should eat now <laughs> <laughs> and when i was traveling i mean i guess there's that piece about the body and there's also the piece where sometimes and for me myself included we travel to get away from something, hoping that that will eliminate it. Mm. So, you know, I've always had a very aware mind and, you know, we each have our own experiences. So there were probably experiences that I would have liked to have not thought about. So I believed that going overseas was going to be a way of getting away from them. And the truth is it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I was faced with more of me not surrounded by friends or family and the combination of that and probably just you know being busy traveling on a budget you know being in different cultures in different time zones in different climates 
um, eventually my body just got really tired. And I remember being in Italy and I spoke the language a little bit. Um, I ended up going to a doctor and all I knew is that they said fegato, um, which I'm pretty sure is the liver now. <laughs> I had to think about that, but fegato. And I didn't get the, the full in, in, you know, intensity of what was going on, but all I knew was that I was getting a lot of cramping and a lot of intensity in my stomach. My digestive system was really um, challenged. And I just went, mm, I think I've got to go home. So sure enough, I went to a doctor back in Perth, forward in Perth, we never go back. Um, <laughs> and yeah, my liver wasn't functioning properly. I had sort of like irritable bowel syndrome. I had a lot of digestive, um, a lot of flaring up in the gut. So I had to really look at restoring um restoring that you know so that I could eat because I had to eliminate I, I mean these days you look at gluten-free dairy-free sugar-free I had that experience when that wasn't really topical and I had to create and invent my own way of of, of navigating that that particular way of, of dietary um, change so yeah I, I saw a naturopath I saw a, a very different kind of counsellor um, she asked me a lot of questions and really got me back in touch with me. And I realized how much my body was really aware of um, other people as well. So I was blurred. I was blurred between being myself and being in touch with my body whilst also being very aware of people around me and facilitating other people's bodies with my body. So in the long, in the long, the long and short of it, I... Um, had chronic, I had what they called chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue is kind of generally a conglomeration of, of things, but it just meant that um, I got very, very tired. I required to rest a lot and sleep a lot, and I didn't have a lot of that get up and go energy that had been my my reality until then. So I changed my diet. So I had I had a look internally at what was going on, you know, in my mindset as well, and. Mm -hmm over the 18 months was able to really come back to me and know what I desired to create and I guess listen to my body more than I had been willing to and more than I had realized was important to do and you know some people would say oh gosh that's terrible I'm like no it was such a blessing because it gave me me and it allowed me to really acknowledge my body and learn what it desired and listen to its cues and in so doing, I'm able to work with other people to do that now. Awesome. Great. Well, thank yeah. you for that. Um, we'll be back in a, just a couple minutes um, to hear more about Sarah Andros. <laughs> Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. What is magnificent about you that you've never acknowledged? Are you ready to let your own light shine? What if you were 1,000 times more potent and powerful than you give yourself credit for? What if there was a monthly call that is designed specifically to empower you to be all you can be? Would that be fun for you? Venus Castleberg is now offering a Magnificent monthly membership for only $50 a month. Mention this ad and receive 50% off. To register or for more information about the membership, events, and services, please go to www.venuscastleberg.com. 
Is now the time to be different? This is the story of a very special woman. Just a few knew about her superpowers. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her Mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone. We're here with Sarah Andros, and we just had, like, this great conversation kind of about... Um, she was talking about some physical illnesses that she had and how that changed her. And I, Sarah, I wanted to ask you, you said something before the break about your sickness giving you you. Would you say more about what you mean by that? Totally. Um, I believe, and I've always believed since I was a kid, funnily enough, that if the body could create something, it could uncreate it. There was no, not it wasn't necessary to cut something out or do something different like that. And I guess I'd forgotten about the the body's capacity to heal. And so through, you know, being able to develop wellness again from a, a place where I really literally didn't have energy and couldn't function properly, I was reminded of me and what was important to me and what I actually knew. So it's sort of like just when something really reads as true for you, that was what had always been true for me. And I guess my life experiences and what I'd been taught from parents and people around me was was something different to that. So when I sort of, for want of a better word, created, you know, being unwell, it allowed me to uncreate that. And it allowed me to also know that what I knew to be true was, was real. So that, that gave me me because that, that's what I always believed. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And what was, how did that manifest or actualize for you? Like, what did you change in you? I mean, it sounds like your beliefs were part of that, but like, what did you change to have you find more of you through your well, body? In, yeah, prior to the break, I talked about how I was aware of other people around me and mm. I guess I hadn't really known until I got, you know, sick, created this sickness and really had to sit with myself for a lot of the time, you know, I couldn't do a lot. So I had to be with myself and I realized how much of other people's lives I'd been living, other people's mm -hmm. points of view, other people's expectations of me, projections from parents or well-meaning friends or family members. And yeah, I... I was able to get clear on what the energy of me was and my true life and what I desired to create. Does that answer your question? Yeah, in a, in a way, I'm, I'm wondering, did, did you feel like you had that awareness because you weren't around people as much and you were able to just go, okay, is this mine? I think, was that yeah, kind I, of, yeah. It was that, and it was also not doing so much more being. I'd been taught that I had to achieve, 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 do, 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 achieve, mm. achieve, achieve, do, do, do. Yeah. And I realized how much was possible through being and not mm. always having to be actively doing. Because doing would sometimes distract me from what I was being. And when I would do stuff, I'd often override what I knew. So it would be like, no, no, I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. I've got to do this and I've got to go here and I've got to do that. And how many of us function <laughs> like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I didn't have to do everything because I had a reason not to, I was actually allowing allowing myself to be, to be more and mm -hmm. as such build that muscle of knowing even more. And then once I did, you know, improve my health and um, had energy, then I could choose more based on my, my knowing and be and do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, isn't it amazing how, I mean, the universe is always conspiring for us and even inside of something like that where you would say, I'm, you know, sickness and not be having a lot of energy actually 
gave you the gift of you, even though most people would be like, yeah, that's an awful thing. You know, that's a horrible thing to have to go through. So totally like I get my body chills. It's like, (laughs) it was truly one of the greatest gifts for my body so far in my life because I learned at a very young age to listen to my, my body. If my body didn't desire to do something, then it was telling me, Hey, we ought to look at a different option here. Um, it taught me to eat with awareness, um, to, to, to look after my body more than I'd been willing to, to, to check in and see what was fun in terms of movement and, um, yeah, all sorts of things. So not to say that I, I didn't trip over at any point, of course, you know, I <laughs> right. had my little, <laughs> oh gosh, whoops, didn't listen. But what I've realized is that the more I listened to my body, the stronger it became and the happier I was. And for me, mm-hmm. having a strong body and happiness are two of the key things that are important to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to be here. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of the things you've talked about, it sounds like some of it I, you might have even discovered before Access Consciousness, but a lot of these are the some of the teachings of Access Consciousness. So when did you discover Access Consciousness and... Um, sure. So in 2012 is when I, I discovered access. What I'll say is like, you know, I, I healed my physical body. And so, you know, I've since that time always had energy, always had a lot of strength in my body. The thing that the, the counseling and the different things that I did didn't really change was what was going on in my head. Mm. So you know, as well as I was, I was not handling things very well and getting stressed and getting anxious and to a, to a, to a point where I was actually starting to have like panic attacks. And my husband at the time, he, he was also into, you know, different health modalities. And seriously, we tried so many different things. And I, I was worried, I'll be really honest, I was worried that I would either have to be medicated or there would be something that I would have to do that would change that because yeah I was just all over the place and we went to a yoga retreat it was my 40th birthday and my husband was like well look let's do this this you know you love yoga it's really good it connects you with your body you always feel good when you when you do yoga so let's do this retreat so we sure enough we did and there was one day where we went into a cafe and I still I was like yeah this is good but I can't I can't go on a yoga retreat every week, you know. I'm looking for something more. And there were so many flyers and brochures. It was really like a health food cafe. And I just was drawn to this flyer that had this tiny picture on it of the head with all these points on the head. And I picked it up and I was like, there's something about this. It's almost as if I know it. So we followed it up. And sure enough, that was what we call the access bars. And when we we were away in Bali for the retreat so when we returned home to Perth we googled it and we we found a practitioner and I went along and and learnt the bars and then I did the four-day class foundation that comes after that and exactly what you're saying Venus is that yes I knew a lot of the stuff from access prior I just wasn't sure how to implement it in a pragmatic way and so when I started reading the books of access consciousness and attending the classes it all added up it was like, this is what I've been asking for. This makes so much sense. This is that language of like the conversation I'd had with the gentleman in, the, in Amsterdam. This is this, 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 this. I, could, I didn't even, I couldn't question it because it made so much sense to me. <laughs> yeah. So just in case uh, there's anybody listening that doesn't know what the bars are, would you share um, just a little brief description of what the Access Consciousness bars are? Oh, of course. Oh, my gosh. All I have to say is if, if you don't know what the bars are and you're inspired even by this conversation to check it out, please find out about it. The bars, having done 25 years of study of different modalities, when I first had my bars run was the first time I had a sense of peace in my head since I was a kid. So the bars are like 32 different points. They're located on the head. Um, and they're all energetic, so it's just a very, very light touch. The fingers touch the points, and what it allows through the touch of the points is the dissipation and release of thoughts and feelings and emotions and judgments and points of view and fixed points of view 
that you may be carrying and, and functioning from. And they don't just come originate from this lifetime or your childhood. They actually come from many a lifetime. So imagine that we are walking, talking, points of view, judgments, limitations, thoughts, feelings and emotions that we've collected and collated over all of our lifetimes and our, our current lifetime. And that's all rattling around in our head, so to speak. If you could eliminate that, how much freedom would you have? <laughs> so that's what it does. <laughs> and when I had my first session, I got off the table and went, wow. wow. I just was blown away. And I guess that's what inspired me to go on and teach it. And I, I still to this day find, meet people who've never heard of it. They're like, why have I not found out about this before now? And I said, well, it sort of finds you. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, That's okay. I too had a life, life changing event with the bar. So, um, Did you? Cool. cool. <laughs> so, um, how would you say access consciousness changed your relationship with your body? Well, one of the things that access that I love about access is there's never an answer. There's always, we're always asking a question. So, you know, I, I was looking for the right diet. Like I tried raw food vegan before it was cool. Like all the things that are now like people are checking out. I was already trying those out, looking for the right thing. Realizing that there's no right. There's only what your body's asking for. And that can change on a day to day basis. So the willingness to actually ask questions of my body and listen to my body, that's probably the primary paramount thing, listening to my body, not overriding it with my mind, allowed me to have a much deeper connection with my body. So I, you know, one of the things I say to people, um, if, if they've got stuff going on for their body, it's like, well, let's say, I don't know, their big toes hurting or their left knees hurting or whatever. I'm like, well, if that part of your body could speak to you, what would it say? What would it say to me right now? And I, I say it in a way where I say just the energy, not, no thought. And often something will pop straight out and they're like, where did that come from? But that was their body communicating mm -hmm. finally what it had been trying to communicate. So the same goes for if you know people are looking to do some exercise. I say, well, rather than implement an exercise regime, what if you were to ask your body what it desired to do? What would be fun for it? What movement would it like to do? And there's a lightness that comes and then you get to have a joy with your body. So yeah, asking questions was one of the primary things. Awesome. And you touched on something that I found very key too, is that it can change day to day. Like how your body wants to move today is not necessarily how it wants to move tomorrow. And same with food. It's like it might want a donut one day and the next day it'd be like, are you kidding me? I don't want another donut. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So. Yeah. No, that's would you, super, super true. Would you say on, you can um, ask me. judgment judgment plays into that at all? Oh, my gosh, of course. We judge our bodies and our choices or our non-choices so much. And then... We're also aware of what other people are doing or saying that is the correct or the right way. The thing is, though, that there is no right way. And if you're looking for the right way, then you're actually doing it from judgment. And if, if you think that you've got it correct and finally you've found the thing that works for your body, again, that's a judgment. You, you, your body actually doesn't like to be judged. It likes to be received. So when you can eliminate the judgment from the body, that's when the magic shows up with the body. So it's a key, key point, and I'm really glad you brought it up. How do you, how do you not judge? <laughs> <laughs> like That's we're a really, judge, really good right? question. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, totally. Everybody's judging the their bodies all the time. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. the the thing that I would look at too is. Um, we are judging our bodies and then we're also aware of other people judging their bodies and sometimes we get those all mixed up mm. again a question what am i aware of body what are you aware of right now what's going on if you if you listen to the body through the listening it's kind of like overrides that judgment because the judgment is really when you're not listening mm. like if i if I 
let's say I'm judging myself. Okay, I haven't exercised today. That's the judgment, right? Oh, damn, you haven't exercised, haven't moved my body, blah, 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 blah. If I actually go to question and go, well, body, do you actually desire to do some movement today? And it's like, no. <laughs> then that eliminates the judgment because I was actually listening to my body <laughs> by not moving. It's, it's crazily simple and I giggle because it is that funny. And if you just literally ask your body, you know, and if your body's taking you to a certain place or maybe you turn took the wrong exit when you're driving off the freeway or something rather than go oh shit i really messed up I, you know it's like oh hang on a minute well what's right about this and that's a question i go to as well what's right about this and then you realize that you went to a shop where there was something that you're required to get like that's yeah listening to the energy following the energy and asking questions totally gets you out of judgment i find anyway that's great. And it, and if it's also trusting that your body has a, an awareness and a consciousness of its own. Absolutely. We're not taught yeah. that. You know, mm -hmm. we, I mean, in the Western medicine, you know, it's like you go to a doctor and the doctor will make you better by whatever he decides is wrong with you and give you a prescription or whatever, you know, that's a simple version of it we're not taught to have take responsibility number one for what we create with our body and number two not necessarily listen to it either um yeah was there more you wanted me to say on that no that's great i just i just wanted to kind of emphasize that you know like we tend to think that we're somehow separate from our bodies and our bodies are just a vehicle and not a consciousness oh. not a you know, the magic of a being, <laughs> you know. Well, that's the thing. And, you know, what I've seen with people is that the more present they get with their body, there's a happiness and a joy and an ease that starts to show up in their world. Because if we weren't meant to have a body, we wouldn't have a body. We'd just be a spirit or a soul roaming around. The reality is that we've chosen physical embodiment. We've chosen to have a body. So as such, if we pretend that we don't have one or we ignore it, what are we creating with that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was only talking to a client yesterday who also works with people and she said, yeah, this woman came in and she said that she, life is great and she's doing this and this and this and she's achieving this and this and this. And there was something quite off and I ended up asking her and I said, well, was she connected to her body? And she went, oh my gosh, no, she wasn't. So she was doing all the things that this reality says are important. She was successful in her career. She had, you know, a great business. Her money flows were excellent. And yet the level of separation that was going on with her body was not really a sustainable option long term. And, you know, people will focus on, oh, I've got to work hard. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But sometimes the body doesn't, gets totally missed out. And I, I'm a little bit self, not selfish. I'm just really look. I really look after my body. <laughs> so if I, you know, if I've got to go for a walk or a rollerblade or, yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, it. we'll come back in just a couple of minutes and and uh, finish this beautiful conversation. Thank you, Sarah. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Who said life had to be hard and disempower you? What if all of life really could come to you with ease and joy? What if everything you saw as a wrongness of you was actually one of your greatest strengths? What if you could wake up every morning with a newfound sense of empowerment? Join Venus Castleberg to discover a world of infinite possibilities. Every weekday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, Morning Musings goes live on the Venus Castleberg CF Facebook page. What magic can we create every day? Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Welcome back, everyone. We're here with Sarah Andros from Australia and talking about Yee-hoo. the magic of bodies. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said something right before the break that I was like, ooh, I wonder if she'd be willing. I know that I'm kind of throwing this at you last minute, but would you be willing to guide us through like a way to connect with our bodies? Yes. I already knew we were going to do this, so I'm glad. (laughs) I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) So one of the things that I suggest is that wherever you're sitting, and if you're driving, it might be best to do this a different time. So just sitting and being aware initially of three points of contact. So for me, my butt is sitting on a massage table. I have one of my hands is on my knee and then I'm just going to put one of my hands up on my heart. It doesn't matter where. Not quite sure how or why, but this is something that really connects you to your body. And you may even find that your breathing starts to slow and that you just have a different sense of being with your body. And everything that doesn't allow you to connect with your body right now, would you let that go? Now, the other thing to be aware of, and this is just as important as the body, is the being and the soul. So as you sit present with your body, engaging with your body, touching your body, aware of it and where it bees in the world, I ask you to also expand the being or the soul that is you. And you can get it, you can ask it to go above you, below, down into the earth, to the left, to the right, in front and and behind. And expand and fill the room with the being that is you, whilst connected to your body. And everything that doesn't allow that, we let that go. And then you can expand even further and further and further, remembering to go in all directions. What if there was no end to you, the being? And what if through being connected through the body and the being, you have a space and a possibility with your body that really we're not taught to believe is real and true. So everything that you've decided or judged or concluded that your body is or isn't, can or cannot be, will or won't be, we also let that go. You may be aware of your breath. Again, there's no control as to how you breathe. Just allow yourself to breathe. There's so many regimes about you should do this and you should do that. What if there were no more shoulds anymore? What if we could eliminate the shoulds and allow you to get really present with exactly what it is that your body is asking for, with exactly what it has been attempting to communicate to you and what if through listening 
to the body. You build the body awareness and you build the muscle of listening to your body and including it in your life. And anything that doesn't allow that, anything that doesn't allow your body to communicate to you and you to listen to it, will you let that go too? Yeah. Now you may or may not have had your eyes open or shut, but if they were shut, just open them up. And right now, just get a sense of if that feels a little bit different in your body, if you have a deeper sense of connection. I find, as I do now, my voice gets deeper. My senses are often heightened. And those are some of the things that you can look for as you develop a greater awareness and connection with your body. Explore that. It's a lot of fun. Thank you, Venus, for asking. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phila. It was really beautiful. Um, lots more space. Just seems like ease. What are some of the ways that you you perceive bodies communicate? Because I know that it's all different, but like, what are some maybe some of your tells? Do you have have you heard of other people's tells? Like, because some people might just be like, I don't know how to <laughs> even listen sure, to no, my no, body. That's a, that's a real. Yeah. It's such a good question because again, like I said, we're not really taught that, and we're taught to override it. One of the things I find is that sometimes my breathing or I get a sensation, like a heavy sensation in my chest, and I it, it actually is enough. It's like getting a push to the chest. It's almost like stop, breathe, oh, mm. connect. Okay, what, what's going on? You know, so, you know, the breath can be um, really important. <laughs> One of the funny things that I've seen show up when I'm a little bit you know, I have moments where I'm not really listening is I might stub my toe or bang my knee or bang my elbow. I'm like, damn, damn. Oh, buddy, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> and it's sort of, you know, I, if you listen to those tiny little things, you know, it's, it's important because sometimes that's when we're almost tripping over ourselves, literally, and not listening. Um, and the other thing too is... Like when it comes to food, for example, and you've probably heard this before, I, when, when I was unwell, when I was 20 and 21, um, I got to a point where when I was eating something, it would start to taste awful when my body had had enough, but awful in a really mm. bad way. Even when I put a kiwi fruit um, to my lips to eat it, my lips started to split because it was too acidic for my body. So really, really like listening to um, the cues that your body is giving you when you're eating, you know, oh, this is a really delicious mood meal, says the mind, and the body's like, yeah, we're done now. Um, I'm often known to leave a little bit of food on my plate. My friends are like, aren't you going to finish it? It's like, no, no, I've had enough. So that's a really like, and, and ask, you can ask, the funny thing that we, you can do is you can turn the volume up. So if you're not really hearing what your body's saying or you're not sure that you are, just say, body, can, can you turn the volume up for me so that I hear this louder and clearer um, so I really know when you're saying, oh, that's enough food or I don't think we should eat this or I've really got to move. And, and through the turning up of the volume, um, you get to hear it more. And same goes for if there's an intensity showing up in your body and you're sort of like, oh, my gosh, I've got this you know, inverted commas, pain. Never call anything in your body a pain. Call it an intensity. Because what it is, is your body trying to tell you something. Now, in those instances, you're not really wanting to turn it up. You're going to say, okay, thank you, body. What's going on here? Ask it a question, and then you can ask the volume of that particular intensity to be turned down. So you can you can be like a radio. Hey, we're on radio, so this is going to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, is so, that helpful? I'll, I'll take it a step far. Yeah, that's that's really great. And I just I want to take it a little bit farther though, because like I do know that some people are suffering from sickness and they're suffering from like disease and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, how, mm -hmm. how does someone one work through that and two not feel like they're a victim to that? 
like the oh, victim to their bodies. Question. Yeah. <laughs> when you have decided that something is happening to your body, you are eliminating all ownership of the creation of it. So you are putting yourself mm. at the effect of what's going on in your body rather than going, you know what? For some crazy wild insane reason I've created this in my body so what am I going to do now to uncreate it and you know a lot of I've worked with people who've had physical injuries illnesses and when when they're given the awareness or when they're, it's like a very new conversation when they're able to to recognize okay number one I created this then you take ownership for it you're not going to try and blame anyone or anything for it that puts you in the driving seat of change okay number two you this and this is like getting a little bit crunchy here it's like well what do i love about this illness like what do i love about mm. it and people go i don't love it it's real it's awful and it's like well actually there's got to be some payoff right now because otherwise you wouldn't have created it and you know i've worked with people and they sort of like yeah well it means i don't have to do things or i you know people look after me or I don't have to work as much or it's like, right. So is, how's that working for you? And you start to have a conversation with the illness as a possibility for change rather than a problem or a thing you have to be at the effect of. And mm -hmm. again, it takes a willingness to be a little courageous and go, okay, maybe it wasn't my best choice. However, what's possible now and, and talk to it in that mindset as if it's not a conclusion, as if it's not a full stop, but just a comma, and we can continue to write the rest of the sentence or the rest of the chapter. Does that make sense? Mm. Love it, yes, very much. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. You, you, once, you once told me you believed you really are magic with bodies. I wanna know more about what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Now that'd be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it, 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 the thing that makes me laugh is that I I was reminded the other day is that we can't really see what we be. Mm. So when we be something, because we be it so much, we don't see it. And I've had people say to me before, Sarah, you just have so much ease with your body and Sarah this and Sarah that. And I'm like, do I? Isn't this like everybody? And I was like, oh, um. This is what I be, so I don't see it. And I, I'll give an example. I was talking to you earlier, Venus, about this, where I had a lovely lady and her daughter was having a lot of problems and not sleeping and getting really blocked up. And she was her, just, her body was really not well. And over the phone, because she lives on the other side of Australia, I said, well, look, can you imagine that your little girl, because a girl was sleeping, can you imagine that you've got her sitting on your lap? She goes, yeah, that's cool. And so I talked to the little daughter while she energetically sat on her mother's lap and we sort of had this conversation. And what I realized is that part of the magic of the body is recognizing that it's not some object. It actually has its own consciousness and you can speak with it. And when you can talk to the energy of the body, that's when you can create magic with the body. And so literally through a conversation over the phone with some facilitation, obviously, and I also got her body, her mum, to um, run some energetic processes with her just as she sat energetically. I know this sounds really creepy, but it's what we did. Um, on her body, the, she reported within 24 hours that the daughter was sleeping better, that the congestion was going and that there was a different level of ease that the child was experiencing in her body. Now, that's not really a conversation you go into your doctor and tell, okay? Because it's not really, it's not like a, a normal, regular thing. Though, for me, that is normal. That is, and that's the magic that our bodies be. They, when you engage with them and you listen to them and you see them as something not separate to you, then magic is possible. Um, and I don't want to just say it's just because of me. It's also because of what willing people are willing to choose. So my awareness of what's possible with the body is the magic that I bring. And then the person's choice to choose something different is the magic that they bring. And together we create this symphony of possibility or magic that 
yeah, as I say, things can show up that you wouldn't have imagined would have shown up. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, what would be some key pro tools or processes or questions that you use to get yourself into communion with your body? Yeah, sure. Um, well, we talked about the bars before, and mm -hmm. I really am, it's a hands-on body process, so it does um, open you up to receiving and receiving with your body. It's It was paramount in shifting a lot of the mindset stuff for me, which actually then had an impact on my body. So if you can, if you've had bars or if you haven't had access bars, please find someone to do it. It's an amazing tool. Um, the other thing, like I said, um, is asking questions of my body. So, you know, when it does come to my day-to-day -day life, you know, I'm, I do ask my body, what would you like to do today? What, what, what's going to work? You know, and if I've got a really busy day, I also, like seeing clients and stuff, I also be sure to include a time slot for my body. Now, it might not be scheduled in at 3.30 p.m. However, my body <laughs> knows that somewhere in the day, it's going to get a look in. And that's really important. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, if you guys are interested in working with Sarah, she has a life design program that would just be amazing, totally change her whole life. You can email her at Sarah, S-P-H-C-8-8 at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Sarah, for being here for this wonderful information and the magic of bodies. We're so grateful.